What's going on guys, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today I'm going to be taking a look at the all new Barnes & Noble Nook Tablet 7. I actually received an email a couple weeks ago about this going on sale and I totally forgot about it until a couple of viewers actually mentioned it in the comments. Now, back in the day, my very first Android tablet was the original Barnes & Noble Nook and I absolutely love that thing. It was slow, it was clunky, but it was a great tablet back in the day. I learned how to flash custom ROMs, I learned how to root Android, and I actually learned a lot from that original tablet. By no means is this a high-end device. This is a very entry-level device, and inside of the box we get our charging cable, which is micro USB, a 1-amp charging brick, and the tablet itself. Taking a look around back, it's a single speaker setup, it's got a rear-facing camera, it also has a front-facing camera, but don't expect to be taking awesome pictures and videos with these cheap tablets. There is an open slot for an SD card, it will take up to 128GB micro SD. Taking a look at the other side, we have our volume rocker and our power button, and on the very top we have a 3.5mm audio jack for headphones, and we also have our micro USB charger. On the very bottom of the unit there is a pinhole microphone, I don't think it's going to sound very good but they're only charging $50 for this unit. As for build quality, it's a little under the Amazon Fire tablets and much better than the RCA tablets you're going to buy at Walmart on Black Friday for $29.99. And speaking of Amazon tablets, this has the same chipset as the Amazon Fire HD 8. I'm going to do a quick rundown on the specs. For the CPU, we have the MediaTek MT8163. This is a quad-core ARM chip at 1.3 gigahertz. For the GPU, we have the Mali T720 MP3. This is a tri-core GPU. And for RAM, we only have 1GB of DDR3. Now, the Amazon Fire HD 8 has 1.5GB. Same exact CPU, same exact GPU. The display is a 7-inch IPS 1024 by 600 It's not as vibrant as they say on the website, but it'll definitely get you by. As for storage, we have 16 gigabytes on board, but we have that micro SD card slot, and you can throw up to 128 gigabyte micro SD in there. For the OS, it's running a real Android 8.1 Oreo build, but it's Go Edition. Go Edition is specifically optimized for lower end devices with one gigabyte or less of RAM. So with this hardware here, it should run decently well. It's got a 3000 milliamp hour battery, and they claim seven hours of reading or video. So I would put that around the five hour mark watching Netflix. The question's going to come up, the Amazon Fire tablet is the same price as this. Why not just buy the Amazon 7 tablet? And it's a great question. I like the Amazon Fire tablets, but I hate the operating system. It runs Fire OS, which is Android, but it's totally skinned over with Amazon stuff. This is Android with some bloat installed, but it's still Android. So here it is. Overall, I mean, it's Android, but we do have a lot of these Nook or Barnes & Noble apps pre-installed, and you can't disable them. I haven't opened any of them. I haven't signed into anything, so I don't know if they're working in the background or not. Full access to Google Play. I've already installed a bunch of stuff here. The feel of the whole OS is pretty snappy for being a $50 tablet. It's not bad at all. I didn't run a ton of benchmarks, but I did install Geekbench, and I ran it. Not a great score. Single core, 540, multi, 1437. I also ran a 3D Mark Slingshot and it scored a 99, which is the lowest I've ever seen a tablet score. But like I always say, benchmarks are benchmarks. I want to see some real world performance. First up, we're going to get into some video playback using Netflix, YouTube, and I'm just going to open up Kodi. I did install a build and it works fine here. This does have AC Wi-Fi built in, so you can get that 5 gigahertz network. So here we are. I'm using an Xbox One S Bluetooth controller connected here, just so I'm not shaking this thing around. This is a cold startup of Netflix. I won't leave you hanging with everything loading up, but I did want to show you how fast it gets in here. It's not the quickest I've seen, but it's not painfully slow. And if you guys haven't watched High Score Girl, Definitely check it out. Well, like I mentioned, it has a single speaker and it does sound a little tinny, especially if you have it laying on the table because the speaker is going to be facing the back. But if you want to watch Netflix and Hulu, it's going to work fine as you can see here. You're not going to get the HD version, but this isn't an HD screen. I think it looks fine for what it is. Next up, some Kodi. 
I just have it installed from the Google Play Store and I just added a build. Yes, it does work. I'm not going to get into any streaming videos here, but you can go in, install whatever build you want, and watch your favorite movies. For the past few months, I haven't really been using Kodi much. I just use Netflix and Hulu when I have time to watch something. And finally, YouTube. Works fine here. Next up, I want to test out some native Android games. Now, you're not going to be playing PUBG on this thing. I haven't even tested it. I know it's going to struggle, and Fortnite is not compatible. Here's Asphalt Extreme. I was very surprised at how well it runs. Here's Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. It runs great on this little tablet. So pretty much all the Rockstar games like Bully and the other Grand Theft Autos are also going to run fine. And finally, for the native Android games, here's Minecraft. If you want to play Bejeweled or what's it called? Candy Crush. Games like that are going to work fine. This here has a little bit of stuttering going on. And my TNT test felt like it was going to freeze. I'm sure you could turn the rendering chunks down a little bit, beautiful skies off and stuff like that, and get a better frame rate out of it. But for the most part, I mean, if the kid needs a tablet to play Minecraft on, they can get by with this. All right, moving over to my favorite part, emulation. We're just going to go with an SNES game real quick. I'm using RetroArch. This is Mega Man X. So as you can see, SNES is running fine here. If you want to play some NES games, PC Engine, Atari, even Game Boy Advance should run fine on this tablet. Here's some Genesis using the Genesis GX Plus Core. This is Sonic 3. Again, really nice emulation. And finally, for RetroArch, PS1 emulation. This is Tekken 3 here. I'm using the PC SX Rearm Core. This is definitely running at full speed. I had to test out some PSP emulation using PPSSPP. This is Ratchet and Clank. It's not the hardest game to emulate, but it's not the easiest. We do experience some stutters here and there. There's a few games that are going to work fine here, but for the most part, you will encounter stutters with PSP emulation on this tablet. And for the last emulator tested, I'm using MooPen64 Plus FZ from the Play Store. This is N64 Mario Kart. We got full speed here. And again, with this emulator, there's some games that are going to work just fine here, but if you try to go to like 007 or Conkers, it's just not going to cut it.
So overall, it's a decent tablet for $50. Now, the biggest decision is going to be, should I get the Amazon Fire 7 or this? In my opinion, I would pick this up instead of the Amazon Fire 7. But if I had the cash to buy the Amazon Fire 8, that's the one I would go for. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. I'm going to leave links to Barnes & Noble if you want to pick one of these up. I'm also going to leave links to Amazon so you can pick up the Fire 7 or 8 if you decide to go with one of those. If there's anything else you want to see running on this tablet besides PUBG or Fortnite because it's just not going to work out, let me know in the comments below. And if you could, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and like always, thanks for watching.